Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Very good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, uh, thank you. It's good to thank see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you so course, much. Yeah. So, um, on behalf of the Finnish um, African Society, I want to thank you for for taking time to to meet me today. Um, this interview is part of the Finnish African Literature Project. This is um, initiative of the Finnish African Society. Yeah. And our aim is to create awareness and promote um, African literary works from the mm -hmm. African continent yeah. and diaspora to the Helsinki residents and beyond. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you have lived and worked in Eritrea, Zimbabwe, Finland, mm -hmm. and now in, in America. Yeah. You were director of the Helsinki African um, African Film Festival for five years. Mm -hmm. How was the process, Wanjiku, of deconstructing and then reconstructing the depiction of Africa when you lived in, in Finland? Yeah, I mean, I've, I was always of the view when I first moved to Finland and I'd visited Finland uh, quite a bit actually before I finally moved there. Um, but anyway, I, I, I thought that the view of Africa and Africans is a bit skewed and you know watching the news and I'm like I don't even recognize this continent that you guys are you know because I think for the most part what gets promoted what gets told for instance in the news is the you know is is, is maybe war and famine and um, that kind of stuff and I thought like well there's so much more to Africa than that you know <laughs> um, and I think if you watch something you keep watching one one side of things then that's the idea, that's the image, and that's what you construct about a place. So the idea was to bring in these films and have, you know, Africans telling their own stories, you know, um, let them, let, let, let the Finnish, so to speak, or people who live in Finland, um, access Africa through Africans themselves. So that was generally the idea. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you lived there for like, yeah, uh, five years, more or less? Finland, I've probably seven, eight years. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. so very good thanks some of your short stories were um anthologized um, in new daughters of africa uh nairobi noir and mm -hmm. houston noir as well as in online magazines the fall of saints the one that i have over here this yeah. one okay is your first novel it was published yeah. in 2014 yeah i started um reading it and on mm -hmm. page 18 I find myself once again in one of the um, recurrent themes of the African literatures, mm -hmm. infertility and childlessness. Mm -hmm. But the treatment you give to this issue is different to the one uh, which is portrayed in Buchi Mecheta, um, mm -hmm. A de Bayo, or Flora Wampa's novels. Okay, maybe in, in, in what sense? Because my what I wanted to do, what I was talking about in that particular novel, I, I always say that, um, so I'd been wanting to write a novel and, and I, or I started writing short stories, right? And I thought, um, and then at the same time, because I was writing, I used to, I was a columnist for the Mile Makuba Lefty in, in Finland. And, and so I used to write articles and I thought I wanted to, so I came across this sort of issue about, um, you know, wombs for hire, you know, um, I was a bit concerned. I read quite a bit about that. And I thought, um, I'm going to write an article about this just to sort of, you know, um, try to figure out how I feel about it, you know, basically assembling babies in the wombs of, of women in, in, in the South. And I thought, and then, the same and I'd been thinking about writing a novel and then I thought let's do this in the novel you know it'd be an interesting thing to explore and and have you know a woman sort of um go on and sort of you know or, or, or try to investigate kind of this issue and 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 see what comes up so I, that's I mean that's where that's the approach that I had like honestly and I also was also very keen on writing about a woman coming into her age like into her own and, and, and taking up agency or you know not letting things just happen to her that's the other thing I wanted to do I wanted um, to write a novel about uh, a woman who's active and wants to change her environmental world by investigating this sort of 
um, what she thought was a something a mis miscommunicated something, um, and then finding out that it's kind of a worldwide problem. So that that that's basically how I, I came to that. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna quote. I'm gonna quote something from your book. This is on and page I don't two. Have book yet, so I hope I remember that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um, this is very interesting and very interesting. Um, I'm gonna quote it. Um, New York was more multicultural. It was not disappointed. At City College, I didn't have to answer questions about a country called Africa or explain that I had not played with elephants as a child or that we didn't live in trees. Mm -hmm. So, Wanjiku, have you encountered similar questions after you left Kenya? Questions like this? I mean, that's where that's coming from because I think it's also like a running joke around, you know, Africans who live in the US and who've lived in Europe is that sometimes we do get that, those kind of questions. Um, I have friends who've been asked those kind of questions, but it just goes down to what I was saying in the beginning about people having this idea of Africa that is not, that we don't even know that Africa, you know? So, so, so yeah, I've been asked, um, you know, sort of, those kinds of very, um, uh, very, very strange questions about, you know, how we lived, how we arrived in America or, or, or Europe. Um, and, 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 you know, and, and, and also other things, other just, just basically misunderstandings, incomplete stories about where we are from, you know, and that, you know, so, I mean, I, and I think most people who, I mean, I don't know about now, because I think things have also changed with social media, of course. Um, so when I first came to the US in the 90s, I think that, you know, we encountered, you know, questions like that, you know, it, you know, or yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. But it probably has changed because if you haven't had to interact with that kind, with those kinds of questions now, but then again, I live in Atlanta, which is, you know, more multicultural. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, after the internet, you know, 2000, yeah, 2001, yeah. 2002, everything is a little bit different than it used to be. Yeah. Right. Then you have Netflix, which, you know, also shows, you know, African films. And so there's more access than there was. I and mean, before you couldn't even watch, walk into a theater and watch an African film, let alone see, you know, Black people represented on film, yeah. even here in the US, you know. Um, and then, oh, yeah. So, so I, I think it, it, it helps a lot. Yes, definitely. Um, you have a new book, a new book on the way. I'm so excited to read it. Yeah. Uh, season in Hippoland. So yeah. can you tell us, can you tell us a little bit about this new novel? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm really excited about this novel, but <laughs> it comes out October 15, actually. Yeah, year, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's slightly different from the first one in the sense that I'm sort of playing with magical realism. And it, but really, it's it's a it's a novel about a, a storytelling, right? Mm. Um, and I was thinking about because I grew up. So, so just to give you a small background about um, how I came to write that novel, or, or your, my connection to it, is that when I was growing up, my aunt, her name is actually Sarah, like the character in the novel, um, would tell us stories. You know, every even when, whenever she came to visit would sit literally by the fireplace like yeah and then she'd tell us the stories you know and this went on for years and years and then when I was when I was graduating high school right before I came to the U.S. my brother and I thought this is so incredible we're just gonna miss you know it, it will come to a time where the stories will not be told and whatever so we decided to record it but I'm just saying it's and, and we did and I don't know where those recordings are it was a brilliant idea we just didn't store them properly but I I always think about that like how did I become a writer right and I have grown up in a family of writers my dad's a writer but I always think back I, I think about how when I write you know mm -hmm. so so I didn't want to tell a story about um about uh it's the fictional country obviously uh but uh, sort of borrowed from you know everywhere lived in in africa Eritrea, kenya and um and zimbabwe south africa as well and it it kind of like i wanted to tell the story of sort of a fictional african country um through stories you know uh and and what happens to uh and and, and tell the story of this master storyteller in the sense like, who do you become when you live in a, in a country that is sort of um, 
we are not allowed to be who you are when your history has been rewritten. Who do you, who do you become and how do you tackle with that? And how does a society move forward? How does a society fight back? And, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. So um, interesting. And, and this book is completely different to the first one, even the genre. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it is very different. <laughs> yeah. Um, related to the genre, I, I, I got a question for you, uh, a tricky one. Um, so I hope you don't hate me for this. Uh, you know, I'm originally from Argentina and mm -hmm. we love, okay, magical realism. Mm -hmm. So is magical realism an African or Latin American genre? Oh God, I don't even know how is is do we do that? Like I don't know. I I and and uh, you know people study these things about a literature person like in that way. So I is there is that is that a thing? Because we like the stories I'm telling. For instance, the stories that I've told in the you know in the which we call it in the in this novel are you know the stories that my aunt, what you sort of magical you know. Um, so, and I mean, I know there's all, there's a whole debate and a whole sort of between about, you know, uh, science fiction versus magic realism, but, but the way to truthfully answer that question is like, one of my favorite writers is Gashia Makes, you uh, know? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100 And I, and I recently, I, I mean, I think he's a master and I, I can't even for a second, not sort of feel like maybe there is ways in which I have admired, you know, um, his, his his novels and his short stories, and I teach his short stories, you know. Um, uh, I use his short stories to teach creative writing, but you know, and I recently also have to admit I have I read One Hundred Years of Solitude or his novels when I was quite young, and recently as like three weeks ago, just read, reread 100 Years of Solitude. It's, it's a master. I think the way I, I, I can't, I, I mean, I, and when I read it again, I, I sort of, it was one of those, like, I know what's happening in this novel, but I can't put it down, you know? So, so maybe, element. yeah, so maybe, it, it, so it may be in that way. Um, I was, it's maybe him that I probably think about um, when I'm, experimenting with magic realism hmm. so we share the same the same genre so we're not gonna label it okay yeah let's <laughs> yeah because yeah, there's a connection it's, it's you know kind of tricky because then one can but 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 in but yeah i mean Kashima cases there's a transatlantic connection between africa and uh, central america and south america yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh so, absolutely. yeah so okay it was a tricky question i just wanted to know your very, very what you tricky. think about this yeah okay so um, our African writers, especially female writers, rewriting the concept of motherhood, what do you think? I, 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 I'm not even sure I, I, um, what did, I understand that question because I, I always find that question like a mod. The concept writing. of motherhood is different right now what I see than the first generation of female writers like Uchi Macheta or Wampa, you know. Um, so what I see is like female writers are rewriting the concept. It's not the, the, the concept that we used to have um, during the 60s. So do you think that you, the third generation, is rewriting this concept of motherhood? In the sense of the role of women in society is that what you mean yes. because I, I i yeah so 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 the way i approach like that's what i was saying in the beginning i questions about women writers and i i feel like because when you set out to write i mean the truth is like you you can't okay so you can't write outside yourself that's what i think I think you write about your experiences, you write about what you see in the world, that's what you bring into your into your novel. So it's fictionalized sort of reality in a, in a sense. And also, you know, writers can also imagine sort of, you know, we've read novels where there were, you know, writers were talking about a particular thing. And then a few years later, you know, we're thinking, oh, this person talked about this. But I think it's still a some experience, a, a, a some experience of your 
uh, or, or some, yeah, a summary of your experiences in the world. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, so when I, like when I set out to write, I'm not necessarily, and, and, and I might have an idea that I, I want to um, write about a character who, who has uh, a child and then figures out that the child doesn't, you know, um, came through sort of devious ways, which is the fall of saints. But beyond that, I don't know if I have sort of like, a, this is what I set out to do. This is, this is what I'm going to combat in, in, in the novel, in, in writing. So I, I think the way I can, I can only answer that question is from my experience. And I think that I, I, I am writing about what I know. I'm writing about the things that I, um, that I, I, I'm trying to work things out. I'm trying to bring in my, without necessarily sort of, um, uh, it's it, without necessarily knowing that I am, I'm just trying to bring in my experiences. So as a woman, I'm going to see things slight, maybe differently from somebody else or from my brother or from my dad, from my mom, you know, and so on and so forth. So I can, so in that way, then, um, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm setting out to reorganize or to, um, to reintroduce motherhood or to rewrite motherhood. I think I'm just writing from what I know. Uh, as truthfully as I can, based on my experience of the world and what I've determined that experience to be. If that makes does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Because I, yeah, and the reason I say this because I think there is sometimes because we read books and then we we look at um, uh, we sort of try we distill them and we think okay this was definitely tackling this but I don't know how conscious um, you know when you're writing you, you, you're writing who you are you're writing the things that you think about the the things that you've arrived at you know your your um, the things that you've been battling with the things that you're trying to find answers to and then you know your characters carry them you know and then um, um, and then people read them and they're like, okay, this character stands for this, that character stands for that. But I don't know if, or at least in my experience, that I'm necessarily um, consciously doing that. In a, is that making sense? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, I mean, okay. I like that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's better, yeah. you know, in, in a yeah, subconscious or unconscious way. Yeah, much better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, how did your own upbringing in Kenya and out of Kenya shape your understanding of the world and what you want to read and see? Yeah, so so we were, we were quite actually very lucky because, like I said before, my dad's a writer. And so, you know, so I, I grew up watching him write, you know, and then his sister was a storyteller you know, and she came often. So we were always surrounded by stories and storytelling. And, um, and, and then, and we was also a thread, there's a story that we, that my dad started telling my older siblings, right? And then they started telling us those stories. And it was, it's a one central character, um, Wangi Cowboy, that who was just a, like super sort of, um, guy who knew everything about the world who was going to write the injustices in the world and he did you know so what I'm saying is that there was also storytelling amongst us you know so so in that way and then um you know and then we had access to all kinds of literature uh my family and I just have just recent recently um a tribute to one of the people who we also think contributed to to our writing and how we see the world. And that's Sonia Sanchez. She's definitely one of my top, you know, in, in, um, in, in addition to Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And what happened is like, there, there's a poster of her in, in, um, in, in my dad's library. So every time you walked in, a poster of her in a poem right beside her. So when you walked into the library, the first thing you saw was this image of Sonia and then the poem. So we memorized that real quick and we would be, you know, um, telling that, that story. I mean, telling, I mean, reciting that poem around the house. But anyway, so the, we had books from around the world. I read Gashia Marquez when I was very, 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 very super young. You know, I was reading um, Maxim Gorky when I was like, 
you know, quite quite little. I, I you know, that so we we were very lucky in the sense that we had access to books, which is, you know, yeah, yeah, privileged. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was mm. definitely yes. So um, Wanjiku, how do you see the African literature in ten years? Yeah, more women writers will be published, that's for sure. Uh, more books are being published, more publishing companies are coming up. Cassava is doing such a great job, Jakarta Books, you know, East African educational publishers, you know, churning books out. Um, I, I think the, and more, there's so many African writers now, and I, I think that was the point of, you know, so for instance, the Daughters of Africa, the collection of stories is to, you know, Margaret was talking about Basby, uh, was talking about how, like, the, one of the reasons she did that was to showcase, like, look, it's not just one or two <laughs> women. Oh, no, writers. no, no, the many. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, the, over there. All yeah. Of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, there are so yeah. many. And it's just that sometimes they have no outlets. Like getting published is also a difficult business, you know? It's a very, it's, it's sometimes a very, um, it, it's quite hard to get that agent and then get published and get out there. But the more publishing houses we have, and I think also publishers in the African continent are beginning to also allow to do or, or, or recognize that African language are also you know, something to, 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 um, that people are interested in and are reading, you know, um, uh, as opposed to the belief before that nobody was interested in reading African languages is a complete, you know, um, anyway, so, so people are, in, you know, there's more of that coming up. So I feel like, yeah, it's, it's, it's 10 years from now, uh, it's a hope and a wish, but also like, I think will be, you know, quite a few, like, very many, which is good, uh, contribute to storytelling in the world and contribute to um, this great tradition of writing. Mm, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it changed. It, it has just changed the, the last 10 years, 20 years. So I, yeah. I can't imagine, you know. So. Yeah, it's going to be great, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. So, and what are you reading at the moment? And what may you want to read it? So now the book I'm actually um, uh, reading right now is Maria Mabar's So Long A Letter. I read it when I was, yeah, so I read it when I was quite, quite very young. <laughs> and then the other day I thought, I was thinking about her, I, I read something and I thought, I'm gonna read that again. I'm gonna read that again and see, you know, experience of it. I also want to read, um, someone just recommended, Before You Suffocate Your Own, your own Full Self, Daniel mm. Evans, who's African-American. Yeah, yeah, African-American. So. I also, um, I guess that's that will be my next one. But yeah, so long, Alessa is. It's in that book. I remember yeah. liking it, but now I want to read it with. Different. You know, yeah, many years. Really, right, and then when you start writing, you you read books sort of differently. You know, it, you know, and you're you're looking for how did they get this to happen? Whatever. I don't know. It's interesting. So. Um, okay, and your Western one. Which one is your? You have just mentioned the African one. So besides- oh, then they, Before You Suffocate Your Own Full Self by Daniel Evans. Um, it's right here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Someone, it's a collection of short stories, actually. It's not a novel, but I'm, I'm excited. Mm. Well, that's yeah. nice. Now, I've been reading um, short stories, actually, quite recently. I also read The Dubliners by James Joyce. That's really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Ah, oh, mm. man. And I, I, mm. I, yeah, some, some of those short stories are- are good, yeah. Nobliners, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and is your favorite female writer? Ah, um, Amata, I do. Um, Pissy Head. I, I read a question of power and I was, I, I remember thinking if I'm going to write a, a novel one day, I was quite young and I thought it's going to be like a question of power. Question that of power. Really in my mind. I don't know how she did that. Right? Well, it's complicated. It's a complicated book and a complicated mind. So the yeah. only way to write it is just to, to yeah, having a complicated mind. Yeah. yeah Going yeah. through a mental breakdown. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She did go through some very difficult times. And Love maybe that book. Written that novel, but it's such, uh, it's, it's, it's just one of those novels that, I don't know. Yeah. I must I can write. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'm at I do. And Bessie has. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you sit down, to write, what audience are you writing 
for? That's so interesting because I try not to think about things like that at all, at all. I, I, because I think that if I start thinking about that, um, you know, I realized that when I was writing The Fall of Saints, right? And I, I think there is, I think that part of the novel that I think that, you know, characters are, you know, um, uh, making love, you know? And I thought, my dad's gonna read this, you know? Yeah, I know, I, I know. I, <laughs> but I don't know why that, and I thought, okay, that interferes with your whole entire writing process. So I, I, I don't think about that. I don't think about audience. I think about, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna write something, I'm gonna experiment with something, or, you know, I'm gonna sit down and I, I'm gonna let the characters sort of speak for themselves, which for me is a struggle. Because when you're writing, you you want, and you, I have a tendency to sort of get the characters to do a particular thing. And what I've learned over the years is that the key is to allow the process to go where it wants to go, no matter how difficult or, you know, because I also write blindly. I don't quite know the story. I don't have like a, um, a summary or a synopsis. I, I have an idea and then I just go for it. And that's, I guess, the struggle for me is like, allowing <laughs> good 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 so um Wanjiku, it was a pleasure it was very nice talking to you thank you so much for sharing your precious time okay with with us with the finnish african society um very inspiring <laughs> all right so, thank you so much I, I was it was nice it was really nice talking to you yeah, <laughs> yeah. so once again thank you so much uh, so much for your time